In this video, I'll be looking at a Shimano Ultegra Center Lock RT800 Ice Tech Rotor. And this is for supposedly for road bikes. I'm not sure if you use it for mountain bikes also. I ordered this online. I think it was about $40. And it was OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturer. This one does not come with a retail box. Looks like it comes with a lock ring. And I'll try to touch the sides. Oh, there's another bag in here. I don't want to touch the rotors itself just because I don't want oil or grease from my hands to dirty up the rotor. And it looks like that's all that's in this bag. Here is the lock ring cap. It probably goes over the disc rotor. And this is lock 40 Newton meters. And that's the torque spec and it shows the direction the threads need to turn to tighten it. I'll go ahead and later on see what kind of tool you need to tighten this lock ring. I believe it's similar to the one used for Shimano cassettes. I have that out in the other room so I'll go bring it in and we'll see if it fits. So here in front of us is the Park Tool FR5. And this is mainly used for Shimano cassette lock rings. And this is the lock ring that came with the RT800 disc brake center lock rotor. And I could go ahead and see if it fits in here. And indeed, it looks like it fits in well, pretty much perfectly. So this is the one I use for the cassettes, some of the more recent cassettes. So if you have one of those tools, it should work with this lock ring for the Ultegra center lock rotors. Okay, for this next section, I put my gloves on because if I touch it, I do not want to accidentally get any of the oils from my hands onto the disc rotor itself. It's going to be kind of hard almost not to touch the rotors. I'm trying not to touch the rotors and just touch only other parts but because I have clean gloves on shouldn't make too much of a difference if I touch the rotors just a little bit so we go ahead and take a close look at this so I'm just going to take a nice close look at the rotor it uh, looks like a little arrow with a hand do not touch it probably gets quite hot and don't want to burn yourself these rotors are not I don't think they're the rounded kind they look pretty pretty sharp on the sides. I think rounded or not rounded because of its width it could still cause serious harm if you touch it while it's spinning and if you've been braking for a while it'll probably be a little hot too. Another thing are these connections here. There's four connections here and it looks like it's a little thicker on this side so I think the outside might be this side because this is the side that's closer to the fork and you definitely don't want anything sticking out and hitting the fork or any part of the rotation. And because it's recessed on this left side here, actually I should do it this way because the disc forks are on the left side of the bike. We'll take a look at this here and you can see that it does stick out just a little bit. The other thing I want to see is if this floats, but if I kind of push it back and forth I can't feel a float like I can't feel the center part kind of separate from the rotor and that's kind of important for I guess hydraulic disc brakes more so because as you tighten it as you keep pushing and pushing it tightens and it kind of stays there even when you let go there's a spring in there but it pushes out just a little bit but kind of hovers around so sometimes if you have these floating if you had a floating disc rotor the rotor could move just a fraction of a millimeter to prevent rubbing Another thing to note here, it says the minimum T.H 1.5 that this and also that it is a 160 millimeter rotor. I'll go ahead and measure this out to see the width. I believe this is referring to 1.5 millimeter, the thickness of this rotor. All right, let's go take a look at this. Find a section of the rotor here. And this comes out to 1.8 millimeters thick. So you have three tenths of a millimeter if you want to be within the minimum from 1.8 to 
And this part's about 1.7. So that's only two tenths of a millimeter you have for a wear indication. And of so 1.7. I'm not sure, maybe I just didn't measure the other section right. I think it's closer to 1.7. Yeah, 1.72, I've been consistently getting 1.72. Yep, 1.71, 1.72, that's the thickness of a brand new rotor. So I had a TRP rotor, 160 millimeters, 6 bolts, and that came out with 116 grams. I think this one, it looks a little thicker, that it's going to be a little heavier than 116. So my guess would be like maybe 125, but we'll see, see how well I do. Wow, so that was just a guess. Yes, I've never weighed it before, that was the first time. 124.3 grams, so that is a little bit heavier than my six bolt TRP disc rotor. I mean, it looks like a little bit more material too. So if you go ahead and take a look, this is 116 grams. So it adds a little bit more weight. And the bolts on the TRP weighed about, my guess is around 10 grams. The lock ring here on this Shimano comes out to about eight grams. So you save a few grams there just in the lock ring versus six bolts. All right, so taking a look at the splines here in the center lock rotor, it doesn't appear to be non-uniform. It looks like all of the splines are evenly spaced out. Now, if you were to go ahead and look at a Shimano cassette, on the other hand, some splines are thicker than the others, so there's only one orientation and one way it can go, whereas this, it looks like it could be a universal fit. It could fit anywhere, any direction over the splines. This is my first Shimano center lock disc rotor. So, I don't know if it's going to fit or how well it's going to fit. There's the thicker side here, and then the thinner side on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and see if it drops right in. It's actually pretty snug. See, it won't just drop in. You have to find, find the groove and... Oh. So I'm as new to this as you guys are watching this. You guys might have more experience with this. But it looked like it just dropped in earlier. I'm going to go ahead and see why it's not just dropping in. I don't know what I did earlier. It was my beginner's luck. It just fit right on in like that. So I don't think there's any grooves. I just had to be very square. If you're not perfectly vertical, perfectly up and down, then it won't fit. It's actually a real tight fit because those splines aren't too thick. Now the threads here, I added a little bit of Shimano grease. So that's why it's greased up there. And I'll see how it, this lock ring fits over the center lock rotor onto the hub. All right, since it is greased a little bit, I want to make sure that this the threads do not touch the disc rotor itself and either it's taking a nope it's not it's not engaging yet so what's happening is maybe it's just spinning on the other end of this axle here so let me hold this down maybe I have to maybe I have to push down so I'm gonna get this part tool I'm gonna stick it in here find a spot and wait a minute, it looks like it might not fit. You know what I got to probably do? There's the air right there. It's probably have to remove the end cap or the axle. There we go. So that's a learning lesson right there is to make sure you remove the end cap. If there is a little axle in there, to remove that first. Now I can go ahead and tighten that. And if you use a torque wrench, you'd want to make sure it's at 40 Newton meters. So again, I use this Park Tool FR-5. Oh, there we go, it's in the light a, bit, a little bit better. And the tricky part is if you do want to do it right and use the torque wrench, you have to get a socket that fits over this. And it's just not a small socket. So this socket is actually a one inch socket. So it's SAE, it's not a metric. So if you have a 25.4 millimeter socket and this is a quarter inch, 
and it's going to go well, line up with the... Uh, no, this is a half inch. Sorry, this is a half inch. Yeah, this is the biggest version, a half inch. And it's got to line up with the torque wrench that you have. So you need to have a half inch torque wrench. And this is what I use for lug bolts for cars, for high, much higher torque than bicycle stuff. Now, because I did lube it, what I'm going to do is, in the Newton meter section, it says no more than 40 Newton meters. I'm going to drop it down to about 36. That should be enough. I think 40 meters, Newton meters, refers to if you're not lubing it at all, because when you lube it, it could tighten. You don't want to over tighten it and break anything. And I certainly don't want to break my hub. If I strip the threads on that hub, guess what? You're building a whole new wheel. I mean a whole new hub or you have to relace the entire wheel. So I don't want to overdo it. So now you go ahead, install the tool into the threads. Go ahead, put the, if you want to put the socket over you can. Or it might be easier if you go ahead and mount it onto the uh, torque wrench. And you're just going to tighten it until you hear the click. So that click there means 36 foot-pounds and it should be all set. It should be nice and tight or tight enough. You could go ahead and remove that. And now if you like to, make sure your end cap fits back on. All right, so I made a mistake here. Now when I put this back on over here, you could see it didn't fit all the way back in. It just stayed on the top. And you can take a look at this and the thickness of this and let me show you the inside how it looks. So taking a look here you can see that there is quite a bit of space and this does not go all the way down it's just kind of up top and what that did is it pushed the axle out so I couldn't use the fork. So there's a big learning lesson here. So the learning lesson here is to go ahead and take a look at your end caps. Now I had this one on the side with the disc rotor and this one is, does not actually fit. Now if you notice here on the right one it's a lot more narrow. So if you go ahead and stick that one inside then it should fit just fine. I'm going to take the more narrow one. I'm going to go ahead and stick this one in and see how much lower that goes. It goes right on in and then for the other side this one, the thicker one, I'll go ahead and stick that on the other side. So on the non-disc rotor side, you can even tell that it's wider here. This whole area, it's a little wider. So if you stick the narrow one, it'll expose the bearing to the outside elements. Whereas this one's a little wider. So when you just push it right on in, it should fit just well. And there's the Shimano rotor on the wheel attached to a disc fork. Okay, you notice here there's very little clearance between the disc fork and the rotor. So it does work with, this fork does work with 160 millimeters. It's just going to be a real tight fit. So this, this fork definitely would not work with 180 millimeters. It would be so tall, it'll probably rub the fork higher up. Well, there you have it, the Shimano... RT800 center lock disc rotor. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.